A few of my clients who have hired me to teach them about Adobe Captivate 2017 have asked about two things they used to do when designing responsive courses and how to do the same thing using fluid boxes. The first is the idea of having optional content. In previous versions of Adobe Captivate, you could simply select one of your smaller breakpoints and place any optional content off the stage and into the scrap area. When these projects were displayed on smaller devices, the optional content would not be visible, yet that content remained for larger displays. The second idea relates to grouping a series of objects together for alignment purposes. Sometimes you might have several items that need to stay aligned regardless of your screen size. In the past, grouping these objects together made keeping all the items aligned. Of course, in Captivate 2017, grouped, grouped objects are not compatible with fluid boxes. So how can we do something similar? Let's take a look at uh, what I've got set up here in Adobe Captivate 2017. So I have uh, a total of four child level fluid boxes, if you will. There's a uh, fluid box for the title area. There's a fluid box for all of these key points that we want to uh, emphasize to the learners. And we have a space down below for our navigation controls and an area for this map that relates to the evacuation assembly area, which is the first point on this list. Now, this is all great information, including the map, but once you drop below a certain point, I would imagine that the map is not going to be very useful. Let's take a look. We'll just do a preview of the next five slides. So here's our desktop view of the particular slide in question. And let's take a look at what happens when we look at this on smaller device sized items. Let's take a look. Yeah. Uh, there's certainly a point where that map isn't really a lot of use to the end users. There's two things, really. The map gets so small that, you know, you might not even recognize this as your place of work, you know. So uh, having it there doesn't really contribute to the learning very much. The other thing, too, is that by having the map take up half of that center uh, set of fluid boxes, that means the items in this first fluid box are going to be squashed down and take up even less area and obviously difficult to read because of that. So let's return to the project and see what we can do to fix that. So in this case here, with our fluid boxes selected, and uh, if you're not seeing that right now, just draw or drag a selection box around the scrap area and into your stage, then it will bring you this particular display. And now I can select, in this case, fluid box 18, which is the fluid box that contains the map. So the first thing I can do is I can check off this optional checkbox. And that solves the problem of having optional content not display on the smaller resolution or aspect ratios. So let's take a look at what it looks like now and see what the difference is. So that looks again fine for desktop, but let's see what happens when we reduce the screen size. And you can see right around, I'm guessing that's somewhere around the 60% mark. Um, what happens is the optional content uh, is no longer helpful and it just disappears from the display. So we just get the, the main points that are important for the employees to uh, remember about general evacuation procedures. So that works really well. And of course, it, it uh, appears and disappears depending on what device you're looking at it on. Now, there's another situation that comes to mind is, uh, you know, for example, this map, uh, let's first of all unlock it from the fluid box and maybe just take it out to the scrap area over here so we can work with it. So the idea is that, let's say, for example, um, you know, the stakeholder has asked that I put some little markers on the map to indicate where those evacuation assembly areas are. So I could select a little oval, little circle, and just, uh, let's say, I'll hold down my shift key so that it's perfectly symmetrical. And we'll just go there and change the color to red course make it the top item 
and we'll duplicate that a number of times to have one for each evacuation area there. There's one. And another. Here. Two more. Let's do two more. One's the parking garage. And we'll do one for this area over here. So that's all well and good. And let's put this back into the fluid box. I'm going to uncheck that. And we'll drag the map over. Put that back in the fluid box. And now we'll uh, place this where it's supposed to on the map here. Oh, yeah, that's not the behavior I was expecting at all. Of course, if I continue to do that, I'll get a whole bunch of red dots completely separate from the map. So let's actually unlock the, all of these items from the fluid box and again move them out onto the scrap area temporarily, of course. And let's just fix that one marker there. Get that to be the right size and see if I can move the map back to where it's supposed to be. Something like that right there. So we could try this. We could try grouping this entire uh, selection of objects here. Let's group those together and we'll see if we can place that in the fluid box. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, grouped objects are not compatible with fluid boxes. So try as I might, I will not be able to uh, to be able to place that object because it's a grouped object within the fluid box. So the alternative, we still have optional selected here, but we're also going to click on static. Now there's a little information icon next to static because this is kind of a new concept for Adobe Captivate. If we click that, we can learn that overlapping objects are supported with a static fluid box. Additional state objects are supported. Uh, I won't be doing that, but that's good information to know. And static fluid box maintains the aspect ratio on wrap as well. So that's good news. So let's try this out. Let's first of all place our map. I'm just going to uncheck unlock from fluid box. We're going to check our fluid box and make sure static is checked off first. And now what we can do is we can place that map into the fluid box. And now let's try placing our points there on the map. And that's working well. That's working as expected. And we'll just continue to do this. But the one area that I'm concerned about is what happens when we get to a smaller desktop view or into one of the smaller points of view for the uh, the different objects and so on here. I seem to have an extra. So the question I have is, this seems to work okay, but what happens when I change the aspect ratio of the screen or uh, preview it on a device smaller than desktop view? What's going to happen? Are, are these going to remain aligned? Or are they going to suddenly appear in random locations? So let's do a preview and see if this works as expected. Okay, so far that looks pretty good. Desktop view looks fine. Everything is where it's supposed to be. Um, my points on the map are all in the right location. But the real test of this is to try different uh, device sizes or, or different resolutions and aspect ratios and see what happens here. So they're remaining grouped together, even though they're not grouped together. And of course, because the entire fluid box is marked as optional, all of them disappear at exactly the same time. So I think this really is a success. I really like the way this works. So, you know, definitely thumbs up there on the combination of making a fluid box optional and also uh, using static fluid boxes to arrange content to have them overlaid and continue to be aligned with one another.
If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.